Well, looking back in our state, we transitioned from bingo parlors to casinos. And we had been in the bingo parlor business. As an organization, we were left with some big headaches, financial and otherwise. As I recall, there's 15 to 20 board members, uh, as I recall. Uh, it was pretty much felt, I think, generally that it was done. Um, I don't think most people had any idea about what to do to, to right the ship, so to speak. Uh, and so many, you know, just kind of went their different ways. Um, however, Richard Adler, who was on the board at that time, approached some of us and, and asked us if we would consider helping him to resurrect the organization. We were very fortunate to have Richard there and be the kind of person he is that says, okay, I'm dedicated, but I'm also 150% determined that if the goal is for this organization to survive and thrive, I want us all to be on the same page. I, I honestly believe that had Richard Adler not done that, there would, there would not be a Brain Injury Alliance of Washington. Uh, you got your phone on? My phone's uh, over there. It's on vibe right there. Okay, good. When Zach was injured, uh, we were, you know, in the hospital system for 91 days. And your entire focus is about your child. At that time, Richard was the president of the Brain Injury Alliance. And his marriage to the brain injury community and then his expertise eased the tensions as far as worrying about the things you can't control. He helped start our new path. What happened to Zach was preventable. When that happened to Zach, the last half family could have been bitter. They could have been reclusive, but you know what they said? We just don't want this to happen to any other child. You have a, a duty to try to make it better for other people. As a human, you have a duty to try to help others. And, and finding organizations like the Brain Injury Alliance, finding attorneys that really have a passion and trying to make a difference in the world, that was the path that Richard was on. When the Lystat Law came to play, I was an early draft choice for Richard's efforts. His ability to help me get outside my comfort zone and really advocate for Zach was instructive. His vision about what it would take to get that law passed was impressive. To watch him, first of all, work with us to try to make this an educational process, and when that didn't stick, to see him have the insight and wisdom to say, you know, this should be legislated, and I was, I was all in. I crisscrossed the state and talked to a lot of coaches and parents' organizations, and I would go with Richard and we would testify in Olympia, and I talked to a lot of other states later on in this. Long hours, difficult conversations where we had to work with legislators or, or people who were not in favor of what we were doing, and that was stressful, but made easier by Richard's coaching and his presence. If he were just doing his job, then he would have obtained uh, a remedy, a legal remedy for the injustice done to Zach Leistad. Um, but his vision was far beyond that. Schools and school districts are rule driven and if you can have a rule that makes it so that kids have to be taken out when they might have a concussion and can't go back in until they're cleared by a licensed health care provider who knows about concussions and you throw in some education for all parties, then you've made sports safer and it works. He wrote the law, he put it together. Stan Herring said this to us after we passed the law, after the governor signed it, he said, you have a law now. Somebody asked me if uh, the best day in my life was when the Seahawks beat Denver in the Super Bowl. It was a good day. But you know what? That wasn't even the best thing that happened that week. And the reason that wasn't the best thing that happened that week, because that week, the last state passed their Lystat law. The ability to be part of the Lystat law being passed 
was the single most important thing in my professional life. If you're a patient, you want to know other patients and, hey, were you depressed after you had this injury? Hey, um, how did you get back to school or work? Well, the beautiful thing about the Brain Injury Alliance, they support real people doing real transition back to practical things. There's a certain beauty in all of that. My mom, Mo, everyone called her Mo, but her name was Marie. She got uh, TBI from an accident. I've never felt so much dark and anger, I guess. I don't even know what to describe it. So there's a lot of that unknown fear. We stumbled on the brain injury. At the time, it was association. By the time we got connected, uh, Mo had passed away. But knowing that I'm not the first, knowing I wasn't, I'm probably unfortunately not going to be the last. That was kind of like a grasp on reality, I guess. I didn't want anybody else to go through what I went through in the, in the room. It was kind of an excuse to ride my bike more, but I wonder if I started a, like a, I did a bike race and I tried to raise money. This was our eighth year and then it's morphed into the brain ride and uh, it is even better than what I had thought. It's been great to see this grow and I, I really want it to keep growing. I, I love it to grow to 200 riders, 300 riders. That old saying, time heals, and it does. And it, and, it, and it heals to the point where it's maybe sometimes you let go a little too much. One of the things I have never forgotten when we first interacted with Richard, one of the first things he basically said is, you're here to remember your mother and to continue to remember your mother. And it, and that was, I don't want to lose my mom, and I don't want to obsess about my mom. And it reminds me of the great things her and I did, or it reminds me that she was my rock. I think she'd be proud, and I know she'd be proud and be happy that you know this is something I hope will help other people. This symbolizes that each and every one of us has a place to grab on to the organization, the Brain Injury Alliance of Washington, to help each and every person one way or another. One of the beautiful things about Richard Adler is that he's a connector because one person alone can't do it but a team can. And everybody on that team, thanks to Richard, feels like they've had a place in making the results happen. I'd like to tell Richard I'm proud of him. I, I just admire him. I, I think he's an amazing individual who um, stands up for what he believes and, uh, and will, will pay the price. And there is a price that's paid to do these things. His work, the relationships that have developed, the team which has worked together, has made care better. He made something which is enduring, which is inclusive, and which is incredibly important. Because of the Brain Injury Alliance of Washington, they have been there to support me emotionally and physically, allowing me to continue to ride my bike in support of families and survivors for not only today, but also for the future. Organizations like the Brain Injury Alliance, they're able to take some of that experience that comes from people like Richard, comes from families like ours, and then they're able to help other families that have just started out. You gotta motivate those people. You gotta inspire them to be better so that uh, uh, they can be better uh, as you are getting better also. We are unbreakable.